Okay, for this video here, we're going to do 3.4 examples, part 3. So it says, determine any points of inflection and the intervals of concavity on this interval, negative pi to pi. Which means our number line is already chopped into one small section from pi to negative pi. Now, um, we do have a domain, however, that is going to affect that because the sine of x is in the denominator, which means the sine of x cannot equal zero. And in this interval, that actually happens at negative pi, zero, and pi. If you look at your unit circle, that's where this work, the y value will be zero. So that means I have another point here, zero, and this endpoint is not included in my domain, neither is that endpoint, and neither is zero. Now, in order for me to find if there's any more intervals, subintervals in this interval, um, we have to find the second derivative. So the first derivative will be 9 plus, and I am going to use quotient rule for this. So low d high minus high d low over low squared. So that means this term goes to 0. So I end up with 9 plus negative 2 cosine x over sine squared x. Now if I do the second derivative, the derivative of 9 is 0. And if I continue this, I have low d high minus high d low. And chain rule applies because the base is sine, not x. All over low squared. So I end up with actually one of these sine squareds will cancel. Oh no, we shouldn't cancel yet because this sine squared only applies to this first term. So let's go ahead and multiply that out. That's 2 sine cubed. And if we multiply this all out, we get positive 4 sine x cosine squared x all over sine to the fourth x. So then I can factor out a sine and I will get 2 sine squared x plus 4 cosine squared x over sine of the fourth x. So this will reduce one of these, leaving me with 3. And I'll end up with 2 sine squared x plus, and I'm going to split this 4 into 2. So 2 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine squared x all over sine to the third power. So if I factor out the 2 from the first two terms, I get this, and this by the trig identity is just 1. So I get 2 plus 2 cosine squared x over sine cubed x. Now, if I set the numerator equal to 0 to find the critical numbers for when the uh, f prime equals 0, I will get this, and if I set the denominator equal to 0 to find out whether f double prime or y double prime is undefined, taking the cube root of this would lead me back to this equation. And we already know the solutions to that equation, which are negative pi, 0, and pi, which doesn't help me to break this up any further. However, here, if I minus 2 on both sides, I get this. If I divide by two on both sides, I get this. And when I try to take the square root of both sides, I will get imaginary numbers. So I don't have any solutions from this section here, which means that this is the, the split up for my interval. Um, it also means I won't have any critical numbers because I won't have any other um, critical, uh, I won't have any points of inflection because I don't have any critical numbers here since the function is not defined at any one of these numbers. But I can test my intervals. I can test, say, negative pi over 2 in this interval, 
and positive pi over 2 in this interval. So if I plug those into the second derivative, let's see what we get. So this is my second derivative. I'm going to plug that in the calculator. 2 plus 2 um, cosine of x squared divided by sine of x cubed. I'm going to ignore that because I don't know what I plugged in for x last. So negative pi over 2 store x. Plug it in. I get a negative value here. Pi over 2 stores x. I get a positive value over here. So this would be concave downward, this would be concave upward. Um, but again, even though it changes around 0, 0 is not a point of inflection because there's no point there. Um, 0 is not in the domain. So for a summary, we would just say concave down occurs from negative pi to 0, and concave up occurs from 0 to pi. And there are no points of inflection.